Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to Why Not RV. If this is your first time watching, I'm Chris, and today we're doing a massive battery bank upgrade. If you want to learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Check us out online at whynotrvusa.com. We also have a great Facebook group that's growing pretty quickly. Uh, just type in Why Not RV under Facebook groups, or you can click the link in the description below. We're also now on Patreon at patreon.com backslash Why Not RV. Today, we finally upgrade to our lithium batteries. I have five of these batteries. Uh, next week's episode is gonna be us installing the solar charge controller and running the wires up to the roof. That's gonna be its own episode. Um, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But let's get started with putting these lithium batteries in the current RV. To get started, let's talk about the batteries I chose and why I chose them. So I chose uh, five Valence uh, U2712XP lithium batteries. Um, the reason I chose them is because they are the cheapest lithium batteries you can buy on the market. I'm gonna show you guys some of those numbers here in a bit. Uh, without a doubt, they are the cheapest. Now they are lightly used. So they're not brand new batteries. They do not have a warranty. So that is kind of the trade-off of why they're so cheap. But for the price you pay and, and what you get out of them, they're amazing. Uh, tons of big YouTubers for solar and for batteries have done reviews on these batteries and they are outstanding batteries. They, they last over 4,000 life cycles. Um, it, it, insane, insane what you get out of these batteries. One more reason I really like these batteries is they have an internal uh, software diagnostic on board. So you can basically plug your computer into it and you can see everything about the battery, all the different cells. You can see what their deepest discharge was. You can see how many life cycles they have, all that kind of stuff. So it's really cool because I already know that these batteries all have less than or around 100 uh, cycles each. So they're not really that used in all perspective of 4,000 life cycles that it's gonna have. So, you know, 100 that's been used and you're not buying a brand new, but on eBay, you can pick these batteries up for $530 pretty consistently. Um, I've seen them for cheaper, but they include shipping. Um, sometimes you get a bid out there um, or you can find them locally or on some different Facebook groups. So what I actually did was I found four of them on a Facebook group and bought all four of them for like an average price of 360 or 365 a piece. So super, super cheap. Um, and these are 138 amp hour batteries. So for 365 bucks, I paid 100 or 138 amp hours per battery, insane. Um, but again, you can get them on eBay for 530. And then I went and picked up the uh, last one for an extra $400 um, just because I wanted to have five of them because I wanted to have almost 700 amp hours of battery. It's 690 total. So for what I paid was exactly $1,860 for all five batteries. Now you can go and buy them for the $530 on eBay, which I think comes out to like $2,650. I did the math before. Um, and I'm gonna try and put that up on the screen here and show you guys exactly what, what those cost. But you know, for 2,600 bucks for 700 amp hours of lithium batteries, ridiculous. You know, you, you look online at the Battleborn batteries, which is pretty much the number one uh, most used battery out there because they just have an amazing warranty. They're amazing batteries. Uh, by no means would I ever diss Battleborn. If I could just shell out the money, I would. But for me, I never thought lithium would be possible because of how expensive it is. You know, you're talking $800, $900 for 100 amp hour battery. I'm never gonna be able to build a big enough battery bank for what I want. So when I found these uh, for the deal that I found them for, or even at the $530 price mark, that's ridiculous. You can get two batteries, which are 260 or 276 amp hours compared to two Battleborn batteries uh, for 200 amp hours and you're, you're less than a third of the cost already. So it's just ridiculous the price that I paid for these. So from everything I, I can see online, they're awesome. I'm not gonna tell you guys that they're awesome until I personally use them, but I did as much research as I could on these batteries. So hopefully they do good. So let's get to installing them. The first step when you're doing something like this is to go ahead and change your charging profile across all your chargers. Um, you know, if you have a solar charge controller, I have an inverter converter and a DC to DC battery charger. Um, now my solar isn't installed yet, so I don't have to worry about that, but just whatever you have that is already charging your batteries, before you change them over, change your charge settings to the lithium so that when you first plug them in, they're already set to the lithium. So I got to change my inverter here, which I'm going to plug my computer in and get that done. Uh, and then I'm also gonna change the dip switches on my DC to DC battery charger. That's all I need to do. But make sure that you change all of your uh, charging 
pieces over to lithium. If they're rated for lithium, you gotta do, change some switches on them or change some software settings. If they're not rated for lithium, you have to have a lithium charger to charge lithium batteries. Otherwise you will damage those batteries. Okay, so I went on to my DC to DC battery charger um, and adjusted the dip switches to lithium and set it to the voltage that I want for my batteries. I'm not gonna go into detail on that on this video um, just because there's too many options and too many variables for different battery banks and different types of batteries. Uh, I went off of what is recommended for my batteries. Um, so do your own research on that. If you want, reach out to me on our uh, Facebook group and you, know, you can shoot me a message on there. We can talk about it, I can give you some advice but uh, I'm not gonna talk about that in the video. Uh, and then I also went on to my Victron MultiPlus into the software on my computer and changed its settings to the lithium and all the fun stuff I wanted to do for that. So now that that is done, I've turned my inverter off. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect and make sure that every, every load that's in the RV is off, all the lights are off, all the fans are off, everything like that. And then we're going to disconnect the batteries um, and take out the old ones and get the new ones put in. All right, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and disconnect the negative side of the battery. That way, uh, you know, anything that we touch is then disconnected uh, from the frame and everything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and get this off of here. Now if that's disconnected, everything else is safe to start to touch. Nothing's, nothing's gonna cross and hurt each other. So we're gonna go ahead and get this all disconnected and get these old batteries out. All right, so we got the two big batteries out of here. And we got my big battery out of there. Those things are so heavy, it's insane. But now we're gonna go get our first lithium and get it in here and we'll start getting them all together. We'll show you what that looks like. I got the lithium batteries placed in here. Um, working on the cable connections, getting all of the batteries connected in parallel. I'm gonna show you what that looks like here in a bit. But first I wanted to show you how I'm making my cables because the cables uh, that these batteries actually came out of a, of a uh, electric truck and the cable that was on it looked like that. That is the high quality manufacturing that was previously there. So to make uh, these cables, I actually went ahead and I bought a hydraulic crimper this time. Uh, last time I did battery connection or battery cables and stuff, I build my own th things. Uh, I was using a hammer crimper, which got the job done. It worked, it was a budget, but because of the quality of these batteries uh, and how much I'm gonna be using them, I wanted to make these cables as strong as I could. So I got the hydraulic crimper off Amazon. I'll put a link to that in the description below. But let's go ahead and show you what it looks like. I already cut this down to size. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you just got to, you know, measure out however long each cable needs to be for whatever you're doing. And now we're going to go ahead and cut off about three quarters of an inch of the sleeve. Grab our connector. Oh, it's right here. get all this copper nice and tight inside inside of our cable here and now we're gonna get it inside the crimper and we're gonna start pumping now what I like to do is I like to get it to where the uh, actual connector is nice and tight in here and then I press my cables in as hard as I can so there is a, you know right up against it and then I pump. I actually do this on the floor, make it easier. And that is the cable connection that you get. I mean, it is just a super tight grip. Uh, there's no way that thing's coming off. So then we're gonna go ahead and add a little sleeve of heat shrink. And I've been using a little propane burner. I don't really recommend using one of these. I like using a heat gun, but I already have this out here. So you just gotta be real careful because the propane, uh, with the amount of heat that's off that flame, you'll very quickly burn your uh, heat shrink instead of just shrink it. So you just have to be very, very careful. So unless you're really, really comfortable working with propane um, and flame torches, 
I don't recommend doing it. Use a heat gun or a blow dryer. So that's it. There's our nice cable connection. Nice and strong, nice and tight. And we're gonna get the other one done. And I'm not gonna show you each and every one of these connections because there's a bunch of them. I'll just show you what the finished product looks like. But that's how you use a hydraulic crimper and your heat shrink and get a nice tight connection. Well, it might have taken me uh, pretty much a, a full day. Uh, I started about halfway through the day yesterday and I finished up this morning. So let me show you what everything looks like. Um, I, you know, there's too much to show step by step by step of, of doing it. It would have just been a whole lot of fast forwarding through nonsensical footage. So I figured I would just do everything and then show you how I wired everything up. So let's take a look. I haven't fully finished because I am gonna still do some minor minor cleanup and like, you know, get this wire nice and tight so I can put the cover on these things. But basically here's, here's what we're looking at, okay? So we got battery one, battery two, come around the front side, and you got batteries three, four, and five. Now the way these are all wired are in parallel, so all the negatives connect and all the positives connect. And what I got going is the positive comes all the way off of battery number five, and goes all the way up to this distribution bar. So the positive lead comes off battery number five and my negative lead comes right up here off of battery number one, goes down through my cutoff switch. Let me get an angle on that. So it goes through the cutoff switch and back up into my battery monitor shunt out of the shunt into the negative distribution bar, um, which again, you know, on that I have, you know, the house battery stuff, I have the DC to DC charger, and I have the inverter, uh, you know, the multi-plus. So same thing with the positive side, I have, you know, positive in and the inverter multi-plus, I have the uh, house battery stuff, which goes through a fuse and then into a battery protect um, which I see I haven't finished this yet. I'm going to wire this up to my, my battery, uh, my BMS system from Victron. I'm going to wire that into that so that it cuts out the uh, volt, uh, cuts off the voltage going to the house uh, whenever the voltage gets too low. And then I have the DC to DC battery charger coming in right there. So I still have one post left on both of these uh, that I'm going to be using for my solar charge controller, which is going to be next week's video. Um, but that's pretty much it. Pretty simple. Just a nice disconnect on the negative side through my shunt. And uh, that's that's really all there is to it. You know, making all these cables nice and tight, nice and clean looking, that was just so time consuming. It took me forever to get that kind of stuff done. That's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to stay tuned for next week when we're going to be doing the solar charge controller. And the following week after that will be the solar panels. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. Bye.